I am the last Korean War veteran of the Warm Springs Indian Reservation. Uh, I was born in 1930 at the Dells, Oregon. I grew up the Native American traditional way. All I thought about was just fishing and uh, just living. <laughs> I spoke the Native American language until I went to the boarding school at Warm Springs. Warm Springs Reservation uh, was created four years before the state of Oregon. We had veterans of World War I, we had veterans of clear back what we call the Snake War. But uh, from that time on, Native Americans had always taken pride in any kind of uh, military activity. Even in, in the um, uh, September 11th uh, situation, they, Signed up. Some went to Iraq. Some went to uh, Kuwait. Signed up for that. So me, uh, I just got into it by accident, and and to be frank, I kind of enjoyed it. Really, when you turn up 18 or something like that, you you are given uh, you are required to register for draft. Uh, early September of 1949, this is exactly 73 years ago to this year, my friend was uh, uh, asked me to drive him down to the Dell to register, but we accidentally went to a darn, uh, darn recruiting office, and here, here was, uh, I hereby protect the Constitution of the United States and all that kind of stuff, and it was shipped off. <laughs> I held on to several military occupation specialties, like, um, but, but it was mostly in the anti-aircraft heavy artillery 120s. I went through, I went through the ranks Career people that are in the service take a long time to acquire a grade uh, of E6, and I made it in within within 18 months or something like that. Uh, because while while in my spare time I I, I delved into uh, the um, the manual of that artillery piece, learned every uh, mechanical function. Hydraulic function, electronic function, the, the process of synchronization, how, how, how the ammunition, how the ammunition functioned, and uh, so I went from asthma setter, elevation setter, ammunition ammunition sergeant, uh, uh, artillery gunner, uh, and gun section leader. That is a Ryukas command patch. And it, it is no longer used, but that is what they call the Ryukas command, Okinawa. Our primary objective was to protect the Kadena Air Base where the B-29 was stationed. They were going out daily and we, we were on alert every day because Okinawa is just right across from China and China was involved with this war. We were manning our equipment at three o'clock in the morning until the uh, sunrise came up because they figured if there was going to be an attack, there would be sometime from three o'clock until, uh, until dawn. And we were called on alert again from three o'clock till, till, till dark. 
it was alert on, uh, every day, seven days a week. We were stationed out in a right next to a rice paddy, and boy, I tell you, I stayed there for in that in that camp for 18 months out in the field. It was so heavily guarded. I I don't think the Chinese at that time had any capability to to attack uh, uh, that, but they wanted to make sure that it was protected. I I kind of feel that when MacArthur threatened to use an atom bomb, I kind of feel I kind of I'm just uh, I'm just thinking maybe just maybe the atomic bomb was stored on the on the island of Okinawa. I was I was the only one in the group that are making us a, a real study on uh, the mechanical function of the uh, of the artillery piece and how it operated through centrifugal force, setback force, inertia force, all of these functions. They found out that I was doing a lot of the study on this, and they started uh, the the commanding officer. Uh, start asking and pumping me with questions about wh where did you learn? I told him, well, I'm, I'm just delving into that manual, that's all. I'm, I'm just learning. That's what. Uh, that's how I got started into getting better uh, grades. I was in the Army for three and a half years. I signed up for three years, but because of the Korean War, they gave me a, a six-month extension before I could re-enlist. Uh, I I became uh, ill with a with a case bad case of tuberculosis, which was linked to a uh, service connected disability. So uh, I, that that entered the potential uh, career right there. A charismatic preacher came on TV testifying that he had tuberculosis and he was a Native American. I knew God had called me. He had said, son, I'm going to heal you of tuberculosis in a stammering tongue. And you're to take my healing power to your generation. After listening to what he went through because of tuberculosis, I thought, well, if God can do that for him, he could do it for me. I don't have to sit here in a hospital worrying about dying. God healed him. God will do the same for me. That's how I became a believer. You are the salt of the earth, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. Salt means in the Hebrew friendship. You are no longer servants, Jesus said. You are no longer slaves. I love learning of the Hebrew methods, of the Hebrew way, their culture, their way of life. It's really amazing to see how the, how the Indian people, Native American people back on the river, how close the custom were. The Hebrew system and the, and the Waska people are practically almost the same. This is why it, it's easier for the older generations, way before, before our time, to easily understand the Bible because of the custom of this being the same way. This is what it was a long time ago. Jesus, me, tilly well, Tom and Noah, walk The blood of Jesus is eternal.
I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm just a believer. 